to use that was my Whoopi Goldberg um, impression. Um, I'm Liza May. <laughs> And I'm Risa. And I'm Gabby. And happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Shout out to all mothers. Mothers of twins, mothers of ones, mothers of threes, mothers of furry friends, <laughs> the dogs, the cats, mothers the birds, dragons. Oh, the dragons. Yes. Yes. Mother, mothers, mothers of dragons. dragons. I'm wearing like that. a very special <laughs> pink and green because these are my mom's favorite colors. Aww, and that's my that's mommy so made this mess. I love that. So I, I'm feeling my mom today in a good way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good. <laughs> uh, so for Mother's Day, usually what we do, um, I would go to Disney, and Disney actually hands out like these little carnations. Oh, that's adorable. Throughout Main Street, yeah. um, that's like one of my favorite moments with my mom, um, mm -hmm. and it's really fun, and I love it so much. Um, so that's one of my favorite mom moments. Do you have a favorite mom moment, or what do you do for Mother's Day? Um, you know, I now have a new mom because I have my own mother, and I have a mother-in-law. So um, we usually, for the past couple years, we try to get everybody together yeah. um, and do something special with the both of the families. So definitely, it's whatever the moms want to do because it's yes. mom's day. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Usually Take we'll control. exactly we'll, <laughs> we'll usually travel from Orlando to Port Orange okay. and maybe go to like New Smyrna, go to a restaurant out there. Um, you know, maybe walk around Main Street a little bit sometimes. You know. I just let the moms do what they want because it's their day. Yeah, okay, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, usually with me and my mom, it's all about food. So she's like, I want you to take me somewhere that I've never been so you can take me anywhere. So I have to do, my brother and I, we have to do a lot of research on where we're going to take her that mm -hmm. she's never been. So I actually took her to a vegan place. I was like, we're just going to take her. I took her to Ethos down oh, in Winter Park. I love Ethos. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I took her there. And I was really surprised how much she enjoyed it. And she was like, this food is amazing. And I'm like, I know. I'm trying to eat healthy, Mom. So should you. Yeah. <laughs> So, but then of course I take her to the wine room to drink. So there's the, <laughs> so I kind of like yeah, moderation. That's all right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Moderation. Yeah. It's Mother's Day. They deserve wine. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> you deserve wine. Yes. <laughs> all the wine. <laughs> so on top of doing that with our mothers, there's also things that we like to do other than, you know, mommy stuff. Mm -hmm. So something that I actually did that I think would be a lot of fun for folks is the Epcot International Flower and Garden Festival oh, that is happening so right now. Fun. Moms love flowers, don't they? Yeah. Especially, you know, when they're shaped like Donald Duck that's like <laughs> nine. So I think it's absolutely amazing. They are running a lot of Florida resident specials. So please go ahead and go onto the Walt Disney World site to check that out. They also have lots of delicious food. Mm -hmm. They For this festival, they do a lot of plant-based foods. Something that it has to do, some of it will be plant-based, or one thing that I did found uh, find out, a delicious, like, honey adult beverage mm. that's out there, honey-based, and I'm just like, oh, you yeah. got me, you get me every yeah. time. Oh, that, yeah. and of course, when they have the chocolate curd. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So this is something that is very exciting. Of course, uh, they do, like I said before, they do have Florida residents uh, discounts going on. Mm -hmm. You also get to walk around and see all of the beautiful sculptures. And there is a butterfly garden. A lot of people forget that they, yes. they cultivate mm -hmm. yes. butterflies. Mm -hmm. And a large myth about that is they're going to land on you. Eh, not really. Right. The oils in your skin kind of make butterflies go, no. Huh. But if you but if you're lucky, that's a sign of good luck. So oh. maybe it'll land on you. And they're yes. absolutely beautiful. That's awesome. I, I think it's a great thing that. to do. <laughs> yes. For sure. But take your Claritin. Please do. <laughs> or Allegra yes. or whatever you take for allergies. Yes. Because for if sure. you don't, you will be sneezing yourself to death mm. as you hold your delicious food <laughs> in one hand, your drink in the other, smiling at your mother. Mm. I chew. That's awful. Yes. <laughs> yes. My uh, my brother, we didn't think that he had allergies. We went there and mm -hmm. he had the most miserable time. Oh, no. So even if you don't think you have allergies, <laughs> bring some sort of allergy <laughs> relief just, just in case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a test right there. Yes. Exactly. Just in case. 
Uh, I would advise going on during the week if you can, because weekends are very busy. Mm -hmm. But during the week, I think the, I think you would have a great time. Oh yes. yeah! Hey, yes. you can celebrate Mother's Day any day of the That's week, right. any day. Um, the entire year. <laughs> <laughs> but that day in particular, of course. Yes. When you're when I'm with my mom, every day is Mother's Day. Oh, it's crazy because she's just like, it's my day yeah, <laughs> to <that's> shine. Exactly. <laughs> yes, exactly. She put up with all this. So yeah, yep. yeah. yeah. <laughs> That. That. <laughs> well, well, um, I love hearing the Mother's Day plans. I'm super excited and um, we're, I'm very excited because we have a special guest coming on today. So we're going to take a short break and uh, tell us what you do with your mothers on Mother's Day and we'll be right back with our special guest. Is your life dull and boring? Are you looking for some spice in your life? You need to watch The Muse on EB Network. We've got Italian seasoning, we've got oregano seasoning, we've got all the seasonings that you want in your life. The Muse, EB Network. What? Yeah. What? <laughs> All right, now we are back with the Muse, and we have an amazing guest today. I'm super excited to introduce you all. Uh, she is the creator and former host of In My City, which interviewed business owners, influencers, and community organizers. And she is the current co-host of Unchained with Horatio and Lori here on EV Network. Lori L. Barr, give it to Lori, our very first guest. Thank you so much for having me. I'm yes. so excited. Heard great thing about the, about the show and have been <laughs> watching. So I am so happy to be here today. Yes, we're <laughs> happy to have you. Thank you. Thank you. It's not every day that we get a boss babe on the channel. Exactly. Oh no. I love that. That has to go on my business card. Yes, it does. <laughs> Boss babe, that yeah. is awesome. Write that down, boss babe. Boss babe. Yeah, yes, on my business cards. Oh my gosh, it's so exciting. So tell us a little bit about um, in my city. Oh my gosh, in my city. Oh my gosh, I, I have to kind of keep my composure because um, I did in my city for uh, three seasons. It was great. Um, it was a podcast created to um, interview business owners. Um, it started from a blog that I actually okay. started called mm -hmm. Davi and we interviewed business owners, entrepreneurs, um, community organizations and influencers and we got their goods and services out to the people. And um, it was so much joy. I've met great people, great businesses that I partnered with on many different um, projects mm -hmm. after that. And um, last season was my final season and um, I moved on to bigger things. Yes. Um, in my city we'll have a brand new host so I okay. think that is great. Um, I will still be uh, part of production mm -hmm. but I will be behind the scenes now mm -hmm. and let someone else take on the reins and take the show somewhere even greater than where mm -hmm. I expected. Mm -hmm. I never expected it to go so well yeah. that, that it did for the last three years, oh. but it, it was really exciting. And now I am um, co-host of Unchained, which mm -hmm. is going to be also aired on EB Network, EBN TV, and it is um, EB's first and I hope only <laughs> new show. Oh, so cool. it's, it's nice. exciting. Yeah, yeah. my um, my ho my co-host um, Horatio is awesome, and um, we work very very well together getting the news out um, for both um, Jacksonville and Orlando. We're we're concentrating on Florida itself, okay. getting the news out. So mm -hmm. kind of keep it like local. Yeah. news type mm -hmm. things. So. Wow, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's great because, you know, hint, hint, we're going to have Horatio yes. coming on yes. to the news <laughs> at some point as well. So definitely uh, keep tuned in for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but we wanted you on here today yeah. because we wanted to talk about something that affects all of us and all of you out there as well. Mm -hmm. And all of you that are interested in this subject, you know, because it does affect the entire world yeah, yeah. Uh, when you really get down to it. And that is Women's Health Week. Oh, Oh, yeah, it's so important. Women's health, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and I'm sure all of us have our own um, experiences when it comes to women's health mm -hmm. and our own background and our own stories, but we want to hear a little bit about your own. Wow, thank you. Um, 
So I don't even know where to start with all this. This is a great segment. Um, women's health, it's very important to me because um, a year ago, um, just actually mm, mid-COVID, <laughs> um, I was, I've been suffering, so let me go back. I've been suffering in silence because I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I'm a businesswoman, mm -hmm. right? So, a host, a creator of yeah, all things. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> things. everything, right? So I've been managing um, my health in <laughs> very poorly because I make sure everybody else in my family's health is yeah. taken care of mm -hmm. as well. So um, my, my health was deteriorating and I wasn't giving it the attention that it needed. Mm -hmm. And then it came to a point where um, it got real serious. <laughs> and I really have to try to keep my composure with this because I really didn't think this was going to happen today. We got you. The roller <laughs> center <laughs> views love to you. Yes. Yes. Thank we you. got Thank you for that. <laughs> um, so um, a year ago, um, my health got really, really bad. Um, I was, and this, I, I'm trying not to get too graphic with you guys, but um, for women, we all know the time of the month mm -hmm. is probably one of the craziest times of the month, yep. right? Go through a lot of cramping, um, a, a lot of bleeding, and um, I've always been a bleeder, mm -hmm. very, very big, and um, it got worse. It got really worse. It got very painful, um, and I had to go to the doctor to find out why. Not only was it getting painful, but it was sucking the life out of me. Mm -hmm. I was, um, I had changed my um, eating habits, and um, I started a whole healthy way of living mm -hmm. about a year, no, two years prior to that, and I was doing great. Mm -hmm. I'm working out, I'm eating properly, and I'm gaining weight. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, yes. getting older gets, it, it sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yes. that, was, that, was, yes. that was my attitude, because it was just like, wait a minute, you know, I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do, why am I gaining weight? Mm -hmm. And still not paying attention to that my cramps are getting worse, mm -hmm. and the bleeding is like out of control. Oh, right. Um, it it kind of took me back to a place where uh, I was, I felt like when I first started, you know, like yes. learning about it and mm -hmm. everything, it was just, it was crazy. And it got really bad to the point where I almost died. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, uh, I went in one day to the doctors and just was like, I really don't feel good. Um, this is right in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I really don't feel good. I'm exhausted. I can't even climb uh, stairs. And when I mean stairs, I can't even climb a flight. Um, it, I'm struggling. Mm -hmm. I can't stay up. I, I, I'm going down. I need you to figure out what's going on with me. We went in for tests and everything and went in for blood work. And it was then when the office called me and told me they I needed to rush to the hospital because my hemoglobin was so low that I would have had a heart attack and die. Oh. And yeah. that was a wake up call for me. <laughs> yes, I bet it was. It was really a wake up call. So, um, needless to say, um, they I got blood transfusions and everything, but I went. I, um, I went in for surgery and I actually had a hysterectomy. Um, yeah, there was, there, we still don't know what all happened. There's so many different things. Um, at the time we, we started to look into see if might have been um, endo, endometriosis um, that I was having and just never followed up on it. Oh, okay. um, and you know, I, I share my story with you all and with the audience to say, you know, no matter how busy you get, it is so important for us women not to neglect ourselves. Yes, we are caregivers. Yes, we are nurturers. Yes, we have so many different things on our plates, but if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take care of other people. And, um, it, that was probably the lesson that I learned. I get on my family members a lot about their health, mm -hmm. and I was not even taking my own medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was. It's. It's just you know that type of um, 
that type of energy that I kind of just wanted to, to share with everyone. Mm -hmm. um, it's just to make sure that you kind of just, you take care of yourself, mm -hmm. you know, don't, don't ignore anything right. either, yeah. you know, um, you know, we always count on doctors to tell us what's going on, but we know our bodies better yep. than they do. You know, mm -hmm. I, I think um, a, a doctor is like a mechanic, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't describe to the mechanic what's going on with your car, right. mm -hmm. he won't really know what to fix, exactly. right? So exactly. we have to do the same things with our own bodies. Mm -hmm. we, need to, we need to listen to our bodies. Listen, people, your bodies tell on you, okay? <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do. Yeah. There, there are tons of warning signs way before anything happens. Mm -hmm. Um, one of the signs, um, blood pressure, high blood pressure. Yeah. Do you know if you start to increase on your salt intake, mm -hmm. you should probably check your blood pressure. You might be, you might be developing mm -hmm. high blood pressure. Oh, I know that. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's See, if you start to like start to eat more saltier foods and mm -hmm. stuff like that, um, sugars. Same thing with diabetes. If you start eating more sugars, yeah. You need to, you need to pay attention. Your body craves things. Mm -hmm. And they crave, and if they're like negative things, you need to start checking on those things with your doctor, yeah. um, mm -hmm. because it, it's it's a telltale sign of something to come. Right. Mm -hmm. You know. So it's it's it was just that thing. It, it made me start to read more, mm -hmm. um, and again pay attention more to my body on what's going on, and then I, I relay that message to my doctors mm -hmm. so I can, we can come up with a plan. Mm -hmm. I think that's the other thing that. We need to realize as people, again, they're human beings too. Yep. They're doctors, yes, they're right. trained, they're mm -hmm. study, but they're part of your team. Don't yep. go in there and thinking like, hey, this is what's wrong, tell me what to do. They're part of your team. Um, just because they subscribe something to you, they prescribe, sorry, prescribe something to mm -hmm. you, does it mean that you literally need to take just that? You yep. really need to know what you're allergic to, yep. mm -hmm. what might work for you. I've, taking medicine that I've broken out on and I've gone back to my doctors like I can't take this this does not work yeah, for me what right yeah. you know what's going what's going to happen but I I just think it's it's important that we concentrate that our um, doctors are part of our care team mm -hmm. I think that's a great word care team mm -hmm. um, because you're a part of your own care mm -hmm. and I think that is um just something that we all need to keep in mind when we're talking about health and talking about women's health. Yeah. It's just pay attention to your body. Remember, you have a care team. You're not alone. And um, always talk to, talk to your friends. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? I, I, I talk to my mom all the time. I'm like, did this happen to you? <laughs> yeah. My mom and my sisters, they're like my best friends. I'm like, I'm going through this. And, you know, I'm the oldest. So it's like, I'm going through this. Has this happened to you? And... Mm -hmm. And you know, so we, we share a lot, but mm -hmm. I think it's great to talk to your friends, let them know what's going on too. Mm -hmm. I do, I have a great support team, I have great friends. Um, I had girlfriends who actually, um, while I was um, recovering from a hysterectomy, mm -hmm. um, got together and cooked my family dinner. Oh, that's sweet. It was Very really, it was really, really awesome. So I think that, you know, having your support system is important, but we have a care team. You need to listen to your body mm -hmm. and um, just, just talk, share, share your stories. Mm -hmm. yeah. You never know who's going through this. Right. I, you know, I had um, two other girlfriends right after um, I had my procedure actually um, went in, looked in and are looking to have the same procedure mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. 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 Do you find now um, that after it's, done and over with mm -hmm. uh, have you had to like supplement with um, like hormones or like vitamins or so that's a great question because um, I don't because I don't have a full hysterectomy I'm mm -hmm. partial so I have oh. my ovaries okay for oh. that same oh. reason so mm -hmm. I don't have to worry about taking those extra supplements mm -hmm. and you know what technology has changed because mm -hmm. I was so I was my, one of my silly questions was to, um, to my doctor was like, where are you putting them? <laughs> like, like, where like, did they go? They were yeah. on it too. Everything else is gone. So where are you putting them? And yeah. they're actually on my abdominal wall. Oh, and okay. Still, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. That so, and they're good. still... 
They're still doing there, exactly yeah, yeah. what they're supposed mm-hmm. to do. Okay. So that's a great question. Do you now at this point, um, mm-hmm. I would say, what would you say to anybody out there that's mm-hmm. kind of going through the same thing or, you know, scared, you know, because I'm yeah. sure you had to be super scared. Very, very. Um, and I think also what plays into that is not only being scared um, of the procedure because there is a great risk of um, death with mm-hmm. getting a hysterectomy of bleeding out and things like that. But the other thing is it's a hysterectomy. You're not able to have any children after mm-hmm. the fact. So um, my advice is to um, definitely seek counseling with your doctors. Okay. One of the biggest things that I had to do before even the surgery and almost dying um, is uh, I had to actually see a psychologist. You, you go through a stream of things before oh, okay. you even do a hysterectomy. Mm-hmm. You, they, you have to get, um, they have to get a yes from you at least three times. Okay. okay. Um, and you have to see a, um, a, a psychologist, a psychiatrist, um, in regards to to that because it is the end of childbearing, yeah. and they need to make sure that you're that you're ready for what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. So um, definitely talk to your doctors, um, and as well as um, know that it's to me my health. I, I and I love my husband to death. Um, because it, like I said, no children afterwards. So, yeah. um, it was more important to have me around than for me not to be here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, know that, um, that after, after the situation, you still need to go to counseling. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You still need to talk to people, um, and know the risks, be prepared mm-hmm. for the risk, but, um, just, just find peace with it. You mm-hmm. do have to find these with Right. Mm-hmm. Well, um, we're happy that you're here too. Thank yes. you. Thank you very much. You know, <laughs> um, and you just keep inspiring people. Oh, thank you. You know, and keep just pushing forward, yes, you know, yes. and it's so wonderful that you have such a great support system with your friends and your family thank you. and your husband and that is just, thank you for sharing your story with us. Oh, it was um, so great. Thank yeah, you. I feel like I've learned a lot, you know, yeah. and, and we're getting to that age where we need to start paying attention to those yes. things. Yes. So, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Pay attention to your body. Mm-hmm. Pay attention to your friends. <laughs> you never know. Maybe they're not telling you something. Exactly. You know? <laughs> wow, that was so wonderful. Thank you so much for being our very first guest. Thank yes. you so Thank much you. for having me. Thank open you, ladies. Being yeah. part of the muse. Oh, man. And welcome to the muse. You're always welcome back to the muse. Yeah. You know us. Yeah, You're a muse. <laughs> You're a muse. You're an official muse. All right? Yes. I can't wait to come back. Thank you, ladies. Oh, All right. Well, um, we're going to take a break. And... Uh, Whew, I think we need a little breather. Yeah. 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 All right, and welcome back with the Muses. We are your Muses here. We love to inspire you to live and learn. And what do we love? Our nurses. That is right. May is National Nurses Week, and we want to give a big shout out to all you nurses out there and all those in the health field, really, uh, because as you all know, back in this last year, we have really needed our nurses and our uh, health healthcare professionals. Um, my mother-in-law is actually a nurse. And so I want to give her a shout out and, you know, tell her how much we uh, love and appreciate her because she's not just a nurse, but she actually also owns a um, CNA school actually right close by in Port Orange. It is called the Halifax Academy for Caregivers. Um, She does a crash course. It's called CNA crashcourse.com it is also an in-person school and so of course she's uh, you know had her classes very small Mm -hmm. but she gets you prepared to take those cna um uh, courses so it's definitely a place where you can go in and start learning uh, before you decide to get certified because one of the biggest things right now is as much as we appreciate our nurses we are experiencing a shortage as well yeah so i grabbed a quote from her and that's why i have this here because i wanted to read it to you (laughs) and make sure that i do her properly here um but one of the things that she has said is it's so sad that so many want to be nurses but the waiting list of all the schools is so long Mm -hmm. This has been happening for years, at least since I started nursing school more than 30 years ago. Nursing instructors are so low paid, it's hardly worth it when they can make double the money working at a hospital. Mm -hmm. 
I've always loved having student nurses assigned to my patients. I saw it as lessening my workload and I was happy to teach them. So I think that probably inspired her yeah. to become a teacher herself. And she said, the one thing this pandemic is going to bring to light the problem of never having enough instructors, maybe some solutions will come apart before the nursing profession completely falls apart. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of that is kind of what we touched on in the previous episodes is women inspiring other women. Yes. She felt inspired herself mm -hmm. to become a teacher because she realized how many nurses want to get into the profession, but unfortunately, since the school you know, list is so long, yeah. how do you fix that problem? You get more instructors, but how do you get people to want to be instructors? Exactly. Right? So uh, that's something that I think definitely needs to be brought to light is that if you have a love for teaching and helping others as well, why not consider being a, an instructor as well? And if you are interested in getting into the medical field yourself, you know, maybe go into a CNA crash course, see if it's something for you. Um, that's why I'm super excited to not only talk about National Nurses Week, but our herstory this month, led by Liza. Yes, and I'm yes. going to roll my sleeves up for this one. This one's a big one. It's a heavy one. Yeah. Nursing yeah. is heavy, right? Yeah, yeah. It is. yeah, it's National Nurses Week. So, what better thing to do than to bring in an amazing herstory for Herstory 101. Her name is Mary Eliza Mahoney, and I keep wanting to say Mahoney because it's spelled M-A-H-O-N-E-Y. Yes. I want to say Mahoney so bad, but it's not. It's Mahoney, <laughs> and you can look up more about her at um, womenshistory.org. So I'm just going to go over a couple of facts because she is the epitome of a boss babe. Yes. Um, she is the first black <laughs> licensed nurse nice. um, and she is such a pioneer so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring my notes into this <laughs> Mary Eliza Mahoney mm -hmm. she was born in 1845 in Boston mm -hmm. yeah and she was actually educated in Phillips School in Boston and a really cool thing about this school is that after 1855 it became one of the first integrated schools in the country nice. yeah so she was like she did stuff before things were cool, which mm -hmm. is really awesome. Yes. Like I said, she's a pioneer. Um, so that's just amazing. I love that so much. And so she wanted to be a nurse since her teens. And she worked at the New England Hospital for Women and Children. A really awesome thing about this hospital is that they only um, hired women staff and women physicians nice. at that time, which is really awesome, yeah. especially since we're talking about like 1850s yep. era. And this hospital actually offered one of the first nursing schools in the country. So she, uh, Miss Mary, Miss mm -hmm. Mary, she worked, <laughs> she worked there for 15 years and she was a woman of all trades. She was a janitor. She was a washerwoman. Wow. She, um, what else did she do? She was a cook. Yes. Um, yeah, she was actually a nurse's aide as well, and this is what kind of enabled her to kind of get a hands-on experience about the profession and see like, oh yeah, this is something I really want to do. Um, and at the age of 33, she was admitted into the 16-month intensive program that this hospital has. And out of the 42 women who started, mm -hmm. only four graduated. Oh, wow. And Miss Mary Mahoney was one out of that four wow. to graduate, thus making her the first licensed black nurse, which is just That's huge. awesome. It's huge. <laughs> it's so huge. And so after she became the licensed nurse, she um, did not follow a career in public nursing, and it was due to the overwhelming amount of discrimination yeah. that happened um, at that time, and it was encountered by a lot of other nurses. So she did not let it get her down. She actually um, pursued a career in private nursing so that she could focus one-on-one -on -one mm -hmm. with her patients, and she was known for her patients, the other type of patients, mm -hmm. you know, with the... Anyways, and uh, her calming bedside manner mm -hmm. and uh, efficiency as well. But uh, she joined this uh, American Nurses Association, mm -hmm. right? And the group had mainly white members and they weren't always welcoming. Mm -hmm. So like we, we just said, but Mahoney felt like there needed to be some sort of advocate for mm -hmm. racial equality mm -hmm. and in 1908, she co-founded a National Association of Colored Graduate Nurses organization 
So this is abbreviated as N-A-C-G-N. I'm gonna say it again because I'm bringing it up. Um, so she actually gave the opening speech at the NACGN's first national convention, and the members gave her a lifetime membership. Yeah, a lifetime membership, and she was elected to be the national chaplain of this thing. So she's just a boss babe, like like Miss Lori. Um, <laughs> And decades after being a private nurse, she served as a director at an orphanage, um, and that was in New York that she served this director. Um, and she continued to champion women's rights, which is what I thought was really awesome about her. Um, in, uh, what was it, 1920, mm -hmm. the 19th Amendment was ratified, and she was one of the first women in Boston to vote. Wow. So, like, she's just all over an amazing, wow. amazing I woman. I know, like, that's, like, that's incredible. Especially yeah. Especially in Boston. Yeah. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? I saw that, and I was just like, I have to say something like that. And then she, her pioneering spirit was recognized with numerous awards and memorials. Her uh, grave is a memorial now, which oh. is awesome. They actually have a Mary Mahoney, um award that they give to nurses or groups of mm -hmm. people that, um, what is the word that I want to use here, that are um, welcoming mm -hmm. and that are very integrated in, um, in their um, area, in their field, yes. in their field. Um, so I just think that that's amazing and it's still uh, being awarded to this day with the oh, American nice. Nurses cool. Association. Yeah. So yeah, like I said, Boss Babe, she's amazing. She was inducted into the Hall of Fame and the uh, Women's Hall of Fame oh, in nice. Seneca, New York. Oh. So, that's incredible. I've yes. got like 5,000 no comments. <laughs> that was me trying to dwindle it down to just wow. two front and back, two point font. <laughs> so, um, excuse my rambling, but she's amazing. Mary Eliza Mahoney, look her up, womenshistory.org. Womenshistory.org. Right. Another Be inspired. Woman. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's so cool. I, I love that. That's awesome. Another amazing woman, another amazing nurse, and it sounds like she was super driven and like yeah. her goals to be educated. Yeah. Which I love. That's such an awesome, yes. awesome, such an awesome woman. Right? What a muse. Uh, <laughs> what a muse. <laughs> that is so cool. Well, I, I mean, I'm loving all this, uh, female empowerment that we've got going on here. So I want to take it over to Gabby to talk about Fem Forum this week. Yes. This Fem Forum is about something extremely personal, something that most of us ladies or those who identify as ladies have. It is called your yoni. Now what is yoni? a yoni, Gabby? <laughs> I don't. I honestly don't know what that is. So. You know what? And I'm I'm so happy to explain it to you. Your yoni is your lady dick. Oh, I do know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> it is your lady bit. So on this fem forum, we are going to talk about how to keep it tight. Keep that yoni tight, ladies, because it Toy. is important. Toy. Toy. Yes, you are absolutely correct. <laughs> <laughs> so. There are a lot of ways to do this, a lot of suggestions in which to do this. I'm just going to run down a couple of them. So, one that has become extremely popular is vaginal steams. We had a conversation earlier, we're like, what is that? <laughs> so, a vaginal steam is actually where you get herbs that are curated specifically for any type of feminine issue that you are having. You literally get a hot pot of boiling water throw your herbs in there with some cheesecloth, you get a special made seat, and you sit on it, and then you wrap yourself in a blankie and sit there for 30 minutes. Mm -hmm. You just relax and let the steam and the herbs do its work. It's kind of basically like a cheesecloth is kind of like a homemade tea bag. Mm -hmm. So you just put the herbs in the cheesecloth and then tie it up with some twine and throw it in the hot boiling pot. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's very interesting, but you have to make sure that the person you're getting these from knows what they're doing, because don't just go willy-nilly, <laughs> hey, this is your yoni, we're protecting your ladies, mm -hmm. that's serious stuff. Uh, another thing you can do to keep that yoni tight, that's exciting, Benoit balls and yoni eggs. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You're like, everybody knows what a Benoit ball is, but what in the world is a yoni egg? It is literally... 
a stone, mostly it's um, rose quartz, in the shape of an egg, and you hoist that thing up there and hold it. It's a form of Kegels, mm. and which is also something I'm discussing as well. Mm -hmm. You can do Kegels without the Benoit balls or the Yoni egg. Are you doing Kegels right now? Of course I am. Me too. So, <laughs> I love it, that was great. So, yes, how do you do that? The easiest way to do that, Eliza's face is the best face I have seen. The easiest way for you to do that is when you are using the restroom. You tighten, you stop your stream, hold it, let it go again, tighten again. That is the easiest way. It keeps your pelvic floor tight. So especially for when, as we get older or women who have had children, sometimes we have a little leakage. So doing your Kegels actually helps prevent that leakage because it keeps them nice and tight. I'm fine doing that. When you put foreign objects inside <laughs> is where you lost and, me. Uh, and <laughs> man, it's I, not for everyone. No, it's not for everyone. I don't do that. But I know there are women who do, and I totally support their choice to do that. Mm -hmm. You want to do that? Go right on ahead. But like you said, like I, I will totally admit right here that mm -hmm. I do the Benoit. Yes. I do the Benoit balls, but if you're not into that, you can do, I've the never egg. heard of that stream, stop stream. Yeah. I've never heard of that before. Oh my God. So yeah. you can always do that. What, why? I feel like if you stream, stop stream, that it would be bad for your bladder and you wouldn't be able to get everything out. No, you, you can know. know. Mm -mm. You and I thought you know what too. I mean. Though. Yeah, I know exactly okay. what you mean. No, no, no. You get it all out. You just stop, uh, and then you let it go. Stop. You let it go. It is. It's actually very good for your pelvic floor. Mm. And um, I didn't know about that until my gynecologist suggested it mm. to me because mm. he was like, "You should start doing that." You know, for when you get older, blah, scary. So I'm like, okay, fine. So if you don't want to do putting Benoit balls or yoni eggs up into your yoni, you can also do a tea. Yes, you can literally I mean, a sip of tea. Yes. Okay. It, the same <laughs> herbs. That sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> the same herbs that you use to steam. Instead of steaming them, get a hot cup of water. Throw those herbs in there and sip. There is actually one that I take that has helped me immensely during my time. Of the, yes, right. during the time of the month. It. it is literally <laughs> called Pussy Tea. P okay, S -S -S all right. I know there it is. There it is, right there. It's, there it is, right there. there. there is. That's what it's called. It's made by a woman. Her name is Karis Love Child. Literally, if you Google it. That's going to be the first thing you see, mm -hmm. and she's right there. And she makes, she actually makes the steams and the tea. Mm -hmm. Now, I prefer the tea because it does help with that when you're menstruating. Maybe you've had a really long period, and you're just like, oh, I don't know what to do. So if you drink this tea, I usually drink it uh, three times a week. Mm -hmm. I drink it. I knocked off uh, an entire day off of my period, and my, and my stream was not my stream, but like, it was a lighter flow, mm -hmm. like very, like almost like I didn't have one. And of course you're thinking, well, does it do anything bad to you? Does it hurt your thing? No, it actually made my skin brighter. Hey. Yeah, it was like, it, there were so okay. many benefits to yeah. it. And it was, it works and I love it. Now the last thing, which is something we all need to do, which is a yoni hygiene. Uh, there is a company made by uh, a black woman, Her name uh, I can't remember her name at the moment, but her company is called The Honey Pot Company. She actually makes, um, I need to get my notes. She, ma <laughs> she, makes, she makes washes, especially for your yoni, washes, wipes, and is now moving into the tampon area. And it's okay. not, it's, they're actually bio. Wow. So it's not like, it's not harmful or anything like that. They actually sell them online. You can go on to thehoneypot.com or you can actually go to Target. Target is one of the few stores that actually sells these products. Now, Walmart sells them, but they're always out. Oh. Every time you go, they're just gone. Mm -hmm. But if you go on, go to Target, they're there. They're great. They're foams, washes, wipes when you need a little refreshing. Mm, it's cool. great. It is. These are how you can keep it together because if we're going to keep this together and this together, we got to keep that together yes. as well, ladies. Mm -hmm. Health nice. all the way down the line. Yeah. Very good point. <laughs> I love that. And so yeah. would you suggest 
um, to everyone out there watching. Yes. Don't put your own herbs together. No. Don't get your own herbs from the corner store. Nope. Make sure it's somebody that's like an herbologist. Yes. That knows yeah. what they're doing with your yes. yoni. Because your yoni is very special. Like oh my said. gosh, yes. So. Yeah. Always make sure when you get something like that, get it from someone who exactly, who is an herbalist, who is a certified herbalist. Don't just go to sell your wacky aunt and it's like, I'm going to throw it in here in a second. Like, no. We all have that aunt, though, that can be like, oh, I can make that. Exactly. Like, just go to the store and I'll grab some rose hips or something. I know. And next thing you know, it's a Pinterest fail. And it's just, I don't want my Yoni to be a Pinterest fail. Thank you. Like, no. Yonis cannot be Pinterest fails. We are not doing that. No, ma'am. All right. Well, speaking of, um, cause you said that the honey, what was it? The honey, honey pot company. Honey pot. Mm -hmm. They do like campons and things yep. like that. I personally, I, I, like I said, I can't mm -hmm. stick things yeah. in places. Um, I, I actually use those, um, those underwear. Yeah. You know, underwear? yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I've never in my life been so like relieved oh, nice. when I'm on my period and mm -hmm. use those uh, it's the thanks yeah underwear. they're I never worry about leaking and nice. I never worry about anything mm -hmm. and they're reusable and oh, it's nice. you wash them and you're like ew kind of gross because like why would you want to sit in your own little puddle mm -hmm. well you don't for those it's mm -hmm. like you white like it's it's dry it's mm -hmm. magic mm -hmm. it honestly is yeah. I get so much pain. I ha I think I do have endometriosis. Yeah. <laughs> I need to go get that checked out. Yeah, yeah. woman's health. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, but um, yeah, I it has helped me be a little bit more comfortable yeah. during uh, Aunt Flo's visit. Yeah. Yes. So, yes. Um, because sometimes she likes to stay for a little longer and unpack yep. and get comfortable. <laughs> and, and make yeah, your like, that you don't want. <laughs> yeah. like, you know, I have things to do. I need you to leave immediately. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. So, so you know, thank you great. for sharing that. You're awesome. very welcome. Yeah, yes. I'm always learning so much here on the VS. Yes. I'm so, so privileged and thankful to both of you ladies and to Lori for coming on and sharing your story. Um, thank you to all the nurses out there, anyone in the healthcare industry that's that's out here working your butts off yes. to uh, help throughout this wonderful pandemic that we're all having and experiencing together. But hey, <laughs> we're in it together, right? Yes. We are here <laughs> for you all and, and thank you all so much. I can't wait for the next, can't wait for the next Muse episode. <laughs> All right, well, go forward, be inspired, live, love, light in your everyday. I'm Liza May. And I'm Risa. And I'm Gabby. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe on all social media and the EB Networks app. See you later, Tater.